kindly mute yourself while the session is running. We welcome questions at any time of the session. Please type it in the chat area as we will attend to it soon during the session. The session will be recorded by EDEC and will be made available in EDEC's official YouTube channel, EDEC University Malaya. Please do not press any recording button. Kindly ensure that you have filled in the attendance form and feedback form before leaving the session. The certificate of participation will only be provided to, par to the participant who have filled out these two forms. Uh, I will uh, share the link of the two forms in the chat area towards the end of the session. Um, without further ado, let's start uh, for Ramesh. Uh, Okay, uh, thank you very much. Juan uh, Sharifa for your kind introduction and also inviting me to, to give this talk. Is my voice clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, thank you very much for headache for inviting me. So actually this session, uh, uh, it's more like uh, sharing or mentoring because like uh, what uh, that I experienced I'm going to share with you at the end of the my presentation maybe we can have a more discussion in a Q&A section or maybe more like uh, sharing uh, your view of point and my viewpoint so we make it is more like a sharing session not just like a presentation by myself because I'm going to share with what I practice it might not be the ideal, but it can be a good option for you to take you into it. And if you find any of the suggestions that I gave, uh, it can be improved even further. You can share with me. So that will be a good um, lesson for me as well to come up with the new ideas. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about the big picture of publishing. So since the title itself, like a big picture of publishing, so I'm not only talking, I'm going to talk about publication. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, overall view, how to get the publication because it's involved a student, it involves funding, it involves availability of equipment. There are so many things are involved. So it is a really a big picture. So publishing is not just write a paper and submit, it's not like that. Because now publishing is, uh, even though it's very important, but it's not that easy as we uh, always think. Okay, before I go detail about my presentation. Okay. Here, uh, the important two people that my mentors towards publications. This one I need to share with you all. The first one is uh, Professor Dr. Abdul Karim Arup. He was my uh, supervisor for my master's, which is MTech of material science, and also my PhD studies. So I did my master's and uh, PhD, uh, what I call uh, during like 2001 to 2004. So during that period of time. So that period of time, obligation is uh, not yet a compulsory to get a PhD. And many people are not into publication as well. But Professor Dr. Abdul Karimarov, my supervisor, during that time itself, uh, just to share with you all, the, even the online uh, publication also started around 2007. You know. So when I complete my PhD in 2004, publication is still not online. We still have to post our manuscript. Then the revision will come by post as well. We normally will send to Elsevier journals, which is in uh, located in uh, uh, Holland at the time. So during that time itself, he encouraged his student to publish paper. Like I mentioned earlier, even though it is not a requirement, not a requirement to get graduate. So what happened when I finished my PhD? When I finished my PhD, I already have like a uh, what we call uh, six Q1 papers. Six Q1 papers when I finished my PhD. That time I don't even know it's a Q1 or Q2, something like that. 
these are the papers that are suggested by Prof. Abdul Karim Karof. So in future, when I became as academic staff, that papers that I submitted in my early studies gave me a very high impact factor and also very good citation and now in my H index as well. So I was cultivated towards publication by Professor Abdul Karim Aruf. So I take this uh, opportunity to thank him. So you are as a participant, I'm sure you also need some mentors to make sure your love toward publications. So initially, it was come from Prof. Pekiarov. Another important person that I need to mention about publication is Chancellor Dr. Gaud Jasmon. He is our uh, vice chancellor during the time uh, I was a uh, staff. So when I graduated from UM uh, with my PhD, I went to work in a private uh, institution. Then 2010, when I got an offer to join University of Malaya, Tansri Gaud Jasmon was the VC. So when I joined as academic staff in UN, he is a person with a vision that publication is very important, which we cannot deny. You know, because people only think of publication as a small uh, piece of work that you published just for you to graduate. But when our vice chancellor, Tansi Gaud Jasmon, emphasized on the importance of the publication, initially, I, even for me, like it is uh, just for a KPI, something like that. But when I grow, become like a professor and become like a senior professor, I realized many of the uh, international grant, many of the international fellowships, many of uh, what we call like international networking, and your keynote speaker, panel speaker, people look at your publications, people look at your impact factor, people look at your citations. So I can say publications started from AKRO. So I go to the next level in the publication due to the uh, vision of our mm. past VC, Tansri, Dr. Gaut Jasmo. So these are the two people uh, can I can say that uh, mentored my publications. So I hope with my presentation and uh, my sharing session, I can be one of your mentor towards uh, what I call like uh, to cultivate the love towards publication by yourself. Okay, the aspects or topics that will be covered. So here there are five uh, uh, what do you call like uh, things that will be covered. So I again take this opportunity to thank the ADEC organizing team for giving me the idea of what are the topics to be covered. So thank you ADEC and the team. The first one will be the importance of scientific writing in terms of research. Why is it important? So I'm going to talk about that briefly. Then Planning for your publication from the start of your research and not at the end of the experiment or research. So that means the idea must from the beginning, you know, not at the end only, uh, you are going to think because when the, the day you start your experiment work, you should have the idea where you're going to submit, what kind of results that you're going to collect. So the big idea must be from there itself. Then number three, consideration of factors to ensure good publication as research outcomes. See, so yeah, what are the factors that will ensure good publications? Because publication can be anyway, you know, sometimes just say your publication is not good, then you won't get citation. Then your H index also will not grow. So that is another issue. And the fourth one is, other form of publications. Okay, this one I'm not going to cover much in my talk, but since I'm not going to cover much in my later part of my talk, let me tell you about these things here itself. So when we said other forms of publications, not just journal papers, suitable for researchers to communicate scientifically and how to design what form is best and most effective. When we said other form of publications, Example, 
you can write like a book chapters when you publish a lot of good articles people invite you to write book chapters or even invite you to edit a book or become a, a book writer this kind of a things might not be useful for your uh, phd uh, graduation in un especially but this will be good for your cv because books are very important because nowadays we are also cultivating the students not only read for the isi papers to read on books also because books are where you get the fundamental theory and important uh, what i call like uh, uh, basics of the research so it is encouraged not only that you also can write some kind of like a news letter even you can write like a 700 words for example the news articles so when your news articles come out in the newspaper ministry of agency might contact you to get more information regarding your research so this will direct you for some uh, ministry related grants or agency related grants which again come back to your publications so that is why other forms of publications are very important okay next what is next after writing and publication so this also i will cover in my talk where is the directions what are the grants that you are supposed to tackle and what is the importance of the grants and how your research whether play an impact or not okay so for all okay am i clear or am i going very fast or whatever yes how good prof okay that's good because if anything uh, missing whatever please let me know i can rectify during my presentation itself okay next the scope of discussion i put it here how to remain productive as a first one i'm going to cover whatever the five i said earlier and the scope also we're going to cover this one okay why i put how to remain productive because include myself all of us was affected badly due to covid 19 and this covid 19 not only what i call uh, what i said uh, issue like a health problem but also mentally we are affected because we cannot go to the lab especially those researchers who 100% depends on experimental work they are really badly affected so how to remain productive how to make sure because two years is a very big gap you know two years of your career if you just didn't do anything then it will become very difficult for you to further advance in your career so two years really affected but again now of course we are talking about the endemic whatever but two years already affected for us to come back to be like a, as productive as before might be an issue also so how to remain productive that's what i'm going to cover and also going to talk about the publication the importance of the collaboration for us to so uh, what do call like uh, uh, come out with many publication and opportunities available and also grant and funding okay first the importance of scientific writings in terms of research one minute huh? okay the importance of scientific writing in terms of research scientific writing is a technical form of writing that is designed to communicate scientific information to other scientists so in other words when we write the way we are writing must be or uh, it should be able to communicate to other scientists that is very important cannot be like a shock syndrome when other people read they must be able to understand what are we writing and we talk about scientific writing remember it is not only writing a journal article it can be a scientific poster or it can be a research proposal so all these things are different skill of writing you know 
writing a journal article might be different when you write a scientific poster it totally different it must attract you cannot have like the too many words the pictures the diagram that you put must attract the audience and the research proposal another important things research proposal we cannot just write for the sake of writing a proposal it really must cover a lot of important things so one of the things maybe i can share with you also about the writing recently one of the international grant when i put my proposal so i got a comment on this when i put a research proposal there is one column they ask about the prior art when you said prior art that means what is the work done before on this that's a prior art so what the gap we going to uh, narrow down we looking forward to so what i did in my prior art i put a lot of work that i did in my life but the comment came the prior art supposed to be what are the other scientists did in that particular field and how as a scientist in that similar field i am going to bridge the gap with this new proposal see the total idea itself it's wrong so these are the things that we supposed to learn or cultivate in ourselves so that we can write a good proposal so the writing skill is very important so what are the important hallmarks in writing a research work first we must always remember its primary audience is other scientists so remember when you write publishing when you talk about publishing eh? when you write in journal article you must remember your primary audience is scientist so it must be in the scientific form just say when you publish in a newspaper so then the primary audience there will be the public so your writing must be towards to attract the public so this is how it works and your writing must be concise and precise and also it must be set within the context of other published work so so that people will have the interest to read your papers so this will improve the citation and also h index of your work okay next planning of publication okay here i am sharing the 11 steps to structuring a paper so this is what i uh, uh, i can say this is what i did during my time as a student like i said this is not you must follow you know maybe you can do a step 7 as a first one or what i call like a step 11 as a first one up to you but this is a just a format that i practiced when i was a student and i believe it is a very success format for myself because i published like i mentioned in my initial part when i was a student under prof ak arup i published like a six q1 paper when i published i follow this structure it might not be the ideal for you you can just modify it where it necessary so again the topic again is a big picture of publishing so the structure or the things that i followed the step 1 will be the prepare the figures and tables so what i'm saying is after we run the experiments okay we got the data once we get the data we need to plot figures or we need to come up with the tables the figures we must see what kind of a shape they got so for example like uh, in our lab we always use the impedance spectroscopy to calculate the ionic conductivity so when you run the graph we must see whether like they got like a semicircle and the tail the shape of the graph very important then what data we going to calculate for example bulk resistance from the thickness uh, of the materials that from there we can calculate the conductivity so after we get the value of the conductivity just say we plot the graph so then we see the pattern of the things so preparing the figures and the tables are very important for example just say we calculate the regression value from the graph maybe we calculate the actuation energy from the graph so all that we must put the tables so from the figures and tables roughly we get the idea how 
and in what directions our results are going on. So that is a first step. Normally I do. Second, the way I get the figures and tables, I write the methodology. For example, what equipment used and what is the frequency range has been implied, what is the wave number range used, what is the two theta value used for the XRD or for the thermal studies, what kind of a temperature is used. So all these methods I will write properly in my step two. That's the second one. Because when you write the methodology, you can come back to your figures, whether you did anything wrong or not. For example, just say, in the methodology, you write the temperature range I use is a room temperature to 800 degrees Celsius. But the figure you plot only from room temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. So something is wrong there. So you can write there in the methodology, you conducted 800 degrees Celsius, but you are only showing up to 100 degrees Celsius in the figure because above the temperature, the results are not very significant because the graph are almost in the plateau, for example. So that is why after you prepare the figures and tables, the methodology is important. Then the third step, normally what I will do, I will write the results first. What results I got, whether the value are increasing or decreasing or whether they got the optimum value or not. So all these things I will write. So the results will be the third part that I will write. Just say, if any of the results not following the trend or not following the theoretical trend, so we can stop there, we can go back to the step one and redo the experiment again and plot the figure again. That is why the step three results come first. But when you repeat again, you're still getting the same results, which is not the ideally needed. Remember, there are two things you must open up your mind. One, maybe some of the setup is wrong. You have to repeat and you have to check the whole setup again. Or your, your, your samples actually giving a different type of results which never seen before. That is not wrong. You know. Why I'm focusing this one, I always tell my students, uh, I give you a good example. Uh, when we talk about the conductivity of the polymer, normally if a polymer got more amorphous in nature, they will always show high ionic conductivity. One of the researchers, he found high ionic conductivity when the sample got high crystalline materials. This is against the theoretical value. But what happened? He found some discussion, he explained nicely, which is against the norm, but happened that paper published in Nature. So we know Nature is one of the high impact journals. So that means the results is actually totally away from the normal theoretical part. He again repeated by going to the step one. When he got the same results again, so either setup is wrong or you got some unique results. So we must open our mind to think in the both the directions. So that is a crucial. That is why I always write the results in the third step. And the fourth step will be, after you get your results, write your discussions. This is very important. So that all the results that you provided, whether got connection or not. So that is where discussion come very important. After you write results and discussion, then write a clear conclusion. So when people read the conclusion, they must get some nice idea. Like you're watching a movie, you know. When you're watching a movie, the, you're always looking for an ending, you know. You always want, okay, I pray there'll be a good ending. Like this movie This movie is a very nice movie. I want a good ending. I don't want anybody to die. I don't want like a negative uh, conclusion, something like that. So, if you see, means uh, many of the researchers normally, uh, when wanted to read your papers, they will look at the abstract and the conclusion. Of course, the title is also important, the abstract and conclusion. So, your conclusion is very important. So, you must write a clear conclusion. Your abstract and conclusion will attract people 
to read the full article whatever you published after step 5 then you go for step 6 step 6 is a write a compelling introduction when you are talk about introductions so here is a what you have to write what people have done what is a gap you going to bridge you can include your papers in the introduction part is no harm but minimize it don't put too many okay so please make sure it's about like a few papers is fine but don't put majority of your paper or papers from your own region or not from your same university or from same group that is very important your introduction the references must vary from many countries write the abstract so after you do all these things then you write the abstract because your abstract must cover your results must cover your discussion must cover your conclusion must also cover your introductions because you are going to bridge the gap so that is why abstract will come later part not beginning like again i am telling you this is what my practice if you look for the research proposal uh, same pattern you know normally people won't write the executive summary at the beginning they only write the executive summary later part because they want to write the methodology first the objective first before come to the executive summary same for publication you must come out with your figures methods results discussion conclusion introduction then only you must write your abstract like i said this is what i practiced when i write the paper okay of course when my students write i'm not sure what method they used of course we want to see the full good quality papers step 9 will be the compose a concise and descriptive title so this is very important your title must be very catchy and also must be scientifically sound that is very important okay the length it depends if a review article it can be short if a scientific article sometimes it need to be longer it need to be longer because we cannot use uh, abbreviation for the title okay and step 9 will be the select the keywords for indexing so keywords also very important so these are the keywords actually will determine your uh, ranking for what we call as a uh, what i call uh, keywords are the one which will determine uh, for your google scholar citation or whatever okay next number 10 is a acknowledgement make sure you write the acknowledgement where you write about what we call as a uh, funding agencies that supported your research and step 11 will be the write up the references so references are very important like i said earlier references make sure you refer to many different regions at the same times like uh, what do you call like uh, different labs and also uh, past 3 years or 5 years are encouraged okay so for any question all clear yeah yes prof all clear okay good okay uh, next factors to ensure good publication so here i put like a five tips you know first of all ask these questions before you prepare your manuscript sometimes you have the desire to publish good publications but is your write up is your paper really a good publication so these questions you must ask before you prepare your manuscript first have you done something new that's the first thing you must ask yourself is there anything challenging in your work will your results influence other researchers have you provided solution to some difficult problems so if you got any one of it then your paper can be categorized as good publications don't always repeat whatever your 
peers done. The same format. You don't repeat. You try to come up with uh, some new uh, ideas. Come up with uh, some new experiment. Or even it can be like the same experiment, but new way of presenting data. Something new, you know. I'm not saying like a totally something very, very new, whatever. But from the same equipment, but some different data you collect or different way you present anything, but it be something new. It cannot be like a same type of graph, same side of write up. Then you go to Turnitin, then the Turnitin percentage will be too high. When you see, same like your previous work or same like your uh, lab mates, something like that. So that is why these four things very important if you want to ensure good publication and high impact. Okay. Next thing you must ask the second one: make your manuscript publication worthy. How to make it worthy? Clear scientific message need to be there. The manuscript format very important because nowadays uh, you must see uh, publication is not that easy like last time. Okay, not as easy as last time. Sometimes editor look at the format. They immediately they reject because now the competition is huge, so the manuscript format is important. Your title and abstract very important because normally editor will look at the title and look at the abstract. If the abstract you are writing the like same story like your other peers, then of course you will say uh, rejection rate is seventy uh, percent, acceptance rate is only like twenty percent, something like that, and they will start to reject. And What's the story? Whether the story is interesting or not. Okay, these are the things. So these are the two tips. The third tips is for you to get a good publication. Write a good cover letter. Some people or some student they focus on the paper, but they forget the importance of the cover letter because nowadays cover letter is also important. Okay. Cover letter means just to say, okay, this paper is novel, uh, and this paper is new, and uh, never published before. So we hope the editor will give consideration. Not like that. Your your cover letter need to be concise, precise. If it's a bit longer, doesn't matter. Okay. So what are the things you supposed to write in a cover letter? State why you think the paper is a good fit for the journal, because Editor can reject the paper by saying your paper doesn't fit the journal scope. So before you reject your paper, because you are the one selected the paper for that particular journal. So before the editor decide to reject your paper, you must write a cover letter to the editor to justify why your paper fit to that particular journal. That is where your first goal should be there for the cover letter. Second, include additional background information that is relevant but does not fit in your abstract. Because abstract, like uh, uh, yesterday, I was uh, uh, submitting on journal. The abstract, uh, uh, my student wrote a uh, journal. Uh, the abstract was a uh, three hundred and seventeen words. So what happened? That particular journal they want the abstract to be up to two hundred words only. So I rewrote the abstract from three hundred seventeen to make it one hundred ninety three. So some of the thing key things it need to be presented in the abstract, but I have to remove it. You know, when I remove it, we might be afraid that might not be sufficient enough. So what we did. We take that particular part and add it in the cover letter. Okay, and focus on answering why you think the question you set out to address is important, and or why what you found is so exciting. So that is also very important. You know, it's more like a bridge the gap, and inform us if there is a controversy or competition we must know about. Like your competing interest, interest, whatever. And another important thing: do not include the abstract, a list of past accomplishment from your lab, 
the details of meetings where you have presented this work and feedback you might have received for your research. So all this is not necessary. Okay. Then number four, write and effective results sections. This is also very important. And effective results section is clear and easy to understand and features unexpected findings and provides statistical analysis of the research. Also, use paragraph headings to describe concrete findings and use a similar headings for the figure legends titles to ensure the data is easy to understand. You see here, huh? your paragraphs, headings, your findings, and the headings for the figure legends all must be uh, what I call like uh, in line you know, so that people know it is uh, going in the right directions. And tie together your results with the discussion and make the discussion correspond to the results. So all must be interconnected. Then only the flow will be there. Sometimes the results and discussion will be in like a two different angles. One will be in the south angle, one will be in the north directions. But that's make the paper not really good. And the fifth one, mind your references. So I mentioned earlier also, cite the main scientific publication on which your work is based. Ensure you fully understand the material you are referencing and that it support your work in the way you think it does. And keep self-citation to a minimum. You can put maybe like a five, but make it minimum. Avoid excessive citation or publication from the same region. Because nowadays, even some publication, huh, we ask you the publication from which region. So you avoid that as well. Okay. Okay, next important point will be the tips for journal selections. Because normally what happens uh, in my lab, okay, in my lab, normally I will ask my student who is the first author to suggest the journal. Because sometimes the student has the vision, you know, he wants to publish in high impact factor. Maybe he thinks the paper is uh, not really, is the best effort. Maybe he can go to Q2. So we must ask the student. And the student also cannot wait for the supervisor only to give the general selections. They also must involve. You know why I say this very important for the students? Because eventually they are going to become academic. So when they become as academic, this is a venue for them to learn things. So must make a list of the journals available. So when journals available means uh, whatever journals you refer, whatever journals you put as a references for your paper, that can be the journals where you can submit. And then determine the impact of the journals. Maybe you can try from the high impact to the low impact. And when you try the high impact, not necessarily the highest, you know. Make sure the journal scope and policies match your needs. Sometimes the highest impact factor that you listed might not match your scope. And also check the journal requirement and distribution. And collect information about the journal's peer review process. Sometimes some journals, they are processed very fast. Some might take even longer. Just say you are rushing for some graduation, whatever, you must look into this also. Because they say you want to do even the last semester, but some journals might take like your six months. You go and submit that, then it's a problem. And also check with your supervisor whether, for example, just say uh, a journal, journal of power sources. If already one paper from your group already under review, if possible, try to avoid sending to the same journal. Unless the work is totally different, totally different field, then it's fine. If about the same uh, area, then better to wait for the paper to complete before you submitting the next paper. And the last one will be the check the instruction for authors thoroughly. A lot of people prepare the manuscript and submit without looking at the instruction for authors. Because instruction of authors where they mentioned the paper needed highlights. And highlights means it must have like 85 characters include the space. We must know that. Some journal will request the novelty statement. We must write the novelty statement also. Some journal, like I mentioned earlier, they only want abstract below 200 words. You prepare your whole paper, you're ready to submit. When you submit, it will say the abstract need to be only like a 
uh, below 150 words, below 200 words. Then you have to again revamp the whole thing. So it will make you put under unnecessary pressure. Then some general will say maximum number of figures is only like a five or eight or number of words. So all this you must look. So just say you prepare with the whole article so happy with the 10 figures and you're going to submit. But then after the two weeks rejected because they say number of figures are too many. Then you are wasting your time. So that is why all these things you must read before you select your journal. Okay, uh, give me uh, one minute. Huh? Let me drink some water before I continue. Okay, just one minute. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Okay, now I already told you about uh, these things. So hope uh, you like my explanation so far. Okay, now I also wanted to, because we are talking about publication though. So publication means uh, don't think because we are academic. And uh, I'm, I'm sure the group here are academic, uh, young lecturers or students or postdocs, whatever. So. When we talk of publication, we must always remain productive here. So what is the new norms here? We can see since March 2020, precisely I can say 18 March, you know, 18 March is when actually uh, they started about uh, these, uh, what I call like uh, MCO and so on. So Malaysia and the whole world have been thrown into turmoil due to the pandemic. So what happened? The academic and research community has gone completely online in adapting the new norms. So it is indeed not easy to carry our research while working at home or even cannot go to the lab. However, it is not impossible. The possibilities are endless. As a wise man once said, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. There are many ways to produce and not just rest on our laureate working at home. At the same time, self-improvement is very essential. So the one I'm focusing here is a self-improvement. That is why I said you must remain productive. Even you can see, you know, why EDEC doing these courses? Because they want us to remain productive. So if you see EDEC doing a lot of courses, you know, because they know we cannot go to lab frequently. Suddenly we are going like a one week, then one of our students got COVID or stuff. So we have to stay away from the lab. So that is why this kind of online things, things are uh, what I call like a created. So we have to thank EDEC for their effort to doing this kind of things. So publishing our research work illustrates progression and acceptance of our work by the academic community. So what is important would be the originality of the work and the contribution it has to the academic community. The rank of the journalist also plays a role in making our CV look good. So to do that, we have to do a lot of this kind of things. So we can attend free webinars, seminars, like what we're attending now, attend free forums. So I can share with you some of the free forums, you know, like an LG, huh? they had like an energy solution innovation forum. The South Korea is one of the very uh, top ranked company. So even like a top ranked company also giving like a free forums and attend free training and learning like a short courses. Okay. So we must always look for self-development opportunities. But problem is we don't even look at our emails and reply properly. Okay. So that is the basics, you know, for us to be a successful academic or a successful student, the basic thing is to reply your emails. One of the, the things that I learned from our former VC, Darcy Gaud Jasmol, he replied any emails from anyone. Okay, if supposed to be replied, will reply. Of course, you have to reply all the emails, the emails that you're supposed to reply. So for me, 
for you to be a successful academic or successful student the fundamental is to read your emails and reply your emails okay so that is why very important must always look for self development opportunities the opportunities won't come to you you must go and search for the opportunities that is very very important okay and also participate in virtual exhibition record your talk promote your talk mm-hmm. online and virtual internship so in my lab uh, even i do like a international virtual internship you know some students from the iit india uh, even like uh, some of the students from the middle east they coming and joining us they doing like a virtual internship so we cannot sit and sulk we must always find alternatives okay so that is very important okay here some of the coaching things that i can also uh, share with you like uh, you can see here these are the websites from the uh, intern so intern is a, another uh, coaching circle same like our edec they also providing a lot of trainings and some of the trainings are really free so please go and explore this kind of a things also beside that we also learn about other languages you know during this time you say you are too tired looking at the publications so how to do the self improvement you can do your self improvement by learning some foreign languages like mandarin or japanese or spanish or german and many languages and also just say you are working in the scientific field how to uh what do you call like uh, go to another way of thinking read go for courses like a philosophy and critical thinking I just wanted to share with you when i doing undergraduate in university of malaya we actually got a course sajara dan science philosophy we study about a lot about the philosophy you know. so when i study the philosophy the course uh, when i was a student the course is on a saturday mm-hmm. 8 o'clock you know people love to sleep but then we go for the classes because whatever i learned during that philosophy uh, the sajara and science falls over very useful when i write my articles you know. we we learn about the aristotle we learn about the plato so many things okay so you must divert your thinking towards these things why i'm saying all these things this will make you a good writer or good reader for your students work all these are very important and here there are more free courses that i'm just sharing with you might be useful okay here also a lot of uh, free online courses sdg academy so why i'm sharing this one sdg academy this sdg academy uh, i'm sure you know sustainable development goals so nowadays when you write your article when you write your proposals they will always interested to know whether your papers whether your proposal whether your news letter whatever got related to the sdgs or not that is very important where your work fit into this so even i uh, just share with you all even uh, uh, my my kids you know one is uh, 15 years old and one is uh, 11 years old even i told them to prepare a slides to present to me regarding the 17 sdgs you know so i just want to cultivate to, to them to know what is sdgs so as a student as a academic we must know where all these sdgs are stand even i can give a talk on the sdgs okay you know why i'm saying that because when you know all the sdgs when you write your proposal when you present your proposal you will have the confidence to how to connect your work to the relevant sdgs so that is very important okay even like uh, our new call for proposal also they are talking about the uh, rmk 12 how your proposal related to that so all these are important if a student if academic if you don't know the sdgs details then it's really problem okay how to remain productive still we must the bigger picture of publication you must increase your online presence okay like you must be actively update your publos you must actively update your scopus google scholar and orcid so all this you must f nowadays even publication people will ask you 
to update your ORCID before you publish it. I'm not sure how many of you actually don't even know what is ORCID. That is bad. You must know. Uh, ORCID idea is a more like your CV, you know, so you can also can update. So make sure you update all these things. Next, complete professional service task. When you publish few papers, sometimes the journal will ask you to become as a reviewer. When you submit a paper or your supervisor submit the paper, when you receive the journal, they will ask you to update your profile. In that profile, you can update your profile as you are available reviewer. You know why I'm saying that? It's very important. Lately, I got a news in the email also, I was informed. Has to be a general. The invitation I got from the general of power sources. Just say if you review an article for them. Normally, a review article is free, you know, just for your KPI. Just for KPI. And also, it's a good for you to read other people's work before they get published. But now, another benefit they gave is just say if you want to publish an open access article in that particular journal, they will give you like a 30% discount. So that is a big sum of money. You know. Let's say you want some papers to be uh, published fast and you want to be in the online so that the visibility is huge. So you can go for it. Just last week, I got the email. So that means reviewing article, it's very important. And next, networking. Networking is another important thing. So email the author of an article you liked and let them know how much you enjoy the quality of the writing or the methodology for the research. So that is how you make networking work. So by doing that, you can share your experience, you can share your knowledge with that particular author in your same field, then it will make a good networking. By doing that, you got the opportunity for international grants. So please do that as well. And next will be getting to the someday list. When I say someday list means, sir, Maybe you did someday, you want to complete, but you don't have enough time. But what happened? Now, just say the lab is closed. Your uh, uh, faculty affected by the pandemic. So you cannot go to the lab. Use this time to do these kind of things. And also take time to read policies related to research. Because now you want to write a good papers, you need to get good grants. For you to get good grants, you must relate your research to the relevant uh, and latest policies related to Malaysian government and also towards the international bodies. So please make sure to do that. Okay, the other things we can do is we do like a group meetings. So this is what I, I always do in my group. They, we do like a literature review, we do like a results and tutorials, and we also do some recreational presentations so that to take the mind off from the students, not just focusing on the, uh, the PhD or masters. So the, the students can talk about jogging, exercise, yoga, traveling, fishing, how to reduce weight, anything, anything to make the things like a more like a fun. We can do that. Okay. Even you can uh, make a uh, talk, you know, how to make people laugh, okay? You can do that, okay? Or how to give like uh, uh, stupid jokes. You also can do that. Anything, doesn't matter. It's all uh, for fun, okay? And also you can learn like a new skill, like a new analytical technique. And also we can complete the pending publications. Always remember, publications pending will put you in under tremendous pressure. If you finish one paper, then go to the other. And don't just keep on uh, uh, accumulating the task, then big problem. Okay, this one I already mentioned earlier, sir. The publication, these are the four important things. Find a suitable journal, ensure the topic is relevant, and write a nice or creative graphical abstract for your talk and website. So here I put one example. Here. You see, huh? uh, nowadays journals asking for graphical abstract. Recently, with uh, one of my students, we published one a review article. You know, 
even they actually requested us to give a, a nice image to put in the cover page. See, that means the journal wanted to put the cover page image from the article. Here. So the graphical abstract is very important. You see here, a nice things, the planner and ruffle. This is one of my collaborator from UK. He put a nice cap, you know, like a red cap and the blue cap. Maybe it's a referring to some football club, like a Liverpool versus Chelsea, for example. Liverpool is a red and Chelsea is a blue. Or Liverpool and Everton, for example. So red and blue. So maybe it's a, because he's from UK, maybe a supporter. But normally the supporters wear the cap. You see how the football thing came to the graphical abstract. This is what I mentioned as a creative things. Very nice, you know. Okay, the cap there. Okay, so planner and ruffled. So very important. Then you can write review papers. Here. So these are another things that actually I did in my lab. What I did here is I encourage my student to come up with the review, review papers because you cannot go to the lab. Then how to make you self still actively publish, write review papers. Review papers got two types. One is review papers on technical part. What people done before, uh, cumulatively you write on that. The other review paper is more to what needed for the public, like a zero carbon emission or carbon neutral nation, something like that. Very general one, you get collect some papers, some policy papers and write towards that. So there are two ways of writing the review papers. So even though you are at home, even though you cannot go to the lab regularly because of the pandemic, you still can write some papers, make yourself still in the same directions. Okay, the other one is, I wanted to share you about the publication is, not being highly cited does not mean that someone's work will never have value. So sometimes your paper publication do not get citation, don't get upset. For example, Wayne Beck is paper in physical review letters entitled a model of laptops. That paper was a basis for standard model of particle physics and won Nobel Prize in physics in 1979. But you see, uh, when 67 he published, there is no citation and there is no citation in 68 also. And up to 1970, only one citations. But the current citation, more than 5,000. So doesn't, that means sometimes citation is important, but you don't give up eventually you will get. So before you submit, make sure you think your paper is good enough. Okay, remember, now the fundings are very limited. The good paper, but no visibility. So these are the problems that we are facing. So when you have a very limited funding, when you have a problem with the visibility, so the the answer for the success will be a solid research with effective communications. So make sure your research is very solid and you do an effective communication with your peers. Okay, publishing strategies to improve citation performance. When you talk about good quality research, but it's not the only driver of citations because citation depends on the field. Some feel very difficult to get the citation. Some time dependent, like I mentioned just now, you can see. It is the same like a movie, you know, some movie here, like a 19, uh, 10 years ago released. The movie is a big flop. But when we watch the movie now, they were thinking, oh, this is a very nice movie. How come we missed it? But the movie is too advanced, not to that kind of a mindset during that period of time. Same for papers also. It is time dependent. Sometimes you have published very advanced papers, but people are not ready to be accepted, then the problem can occur. Okay, it's a time dependent. Then also article dependent and author reader dependent. That's why very important which journal you publish. Then availability is another issue. Nowadays is a big issue because we got the, uh, what we call as a, uh, free online papers. So that is a problem. Okay. Open access. 
Okay, the other one I also wanted to uh, advise for the researchers is make sure your Google Scholar is updated properly. Okay, because all this is important for your publications. Sometimes what happens, you know, when your Google Scholar, when your Publon, Web of Science, all up to date, without your knowing, you will get a special invitation from the journal to publish article for their special issue. So when you get a special invitation for the special issues, that means 90% of the time, your papers will get accepted. Because they know you are a good researcher, they already verify the quality of your papers, and they got a trust on you. So that is why very important. So Google Scholar indexes citation, which can then be analyzed using the free program. Google Scholar is good for disciplines not well covered by citation databases, such as Scopus or Web of Science. However, it is important to carefully check citation data for Google Scholar to ensure there are no duplicates or mid attributions. Because Google Scholar normally directly will extract. So you must go and check, no duplications. Okay. Okay, here, I just put it this one. If you're working in a science field or engineering field, don't just work in that. You should collaborate with other fields like a medical field, for example, or historical field because of uh, computer science or even like uh, economy. That will be like more like a language and so on. Okay, some other tips that I want to uh, what I call share with you. See people and make networking very important. But now, of course, seeing people is becoming difficult. We are in the situation now. We scared to see people. Okay, we already like a scared to see human being. So we are in that particular that kind of uh, uh, situation and scenario now. But it is a way. It is a good thing also because we learn how to do a lot of things online. Before that, we are totally depends on face to face. We pray and hope the pandemic will end soon. But it gave us a very good lesson. Okay. So what we can do, direct approach, promote the expertise, available instrument, and how to characterize, analyze all these, we can do the advertising. Then advertise your expertise and create a good reputation. People must know your team is very good. And make a team, invite other researchers to solve problems. So that is how you make the networking. We cannot be like an alchemist where we work in a silo. And also you can see you know, the changes in the formation of academy in Asia. Until 1990s, you can see the arrows always going towards the Asia. You know. We were under the westernization. We were under the Soviet models. Then we were under the US models. Then we were under internationalization. So since 1990s only, internalization start to occur. That means it's go to both directions. Before that, we are just adapting the models from the Western Soviet and US. Now, since 1990s, it working in a reversible directions. So people are accepting us as a, uh, what I call like a recognized scientist. So this is the time for us to Excel also. Okay, one of the things in the uh, subject that edX asked me to present if possible is regarding the opportunities. So now I'm going to touch on the opportunities as well. So few opportunities I'm going to talk here about the Fulbright Fellowship, Humboldt Fellowship, Global Young Academy, Erasmus, and other opportunities. Why I'm talking about these opportunities. Remember, like I mentioned earlier, we are looking at the big picture of publishing. Publishing means don't think, just write article, publish. No. You need to get all these things, know the opportunities because this fellowship, for example, I'll give you an example. I'm actually a Fulbright scholar. So when I got the Fulbright fellowship, I was attached to Princeton University in US. So when I attach to Princeton University, I'm a adjunct professor there. So I work together with them. I publish a paper. 
You see, eventually I got the publications. Then I got a grant from them. So from that grant, I got a student to supervise. And from that student, I got again publications. So you can see you know, how the fellowship actually connected to the publications. So this is very important. The Global Young Academy. So how joining academy will benefit for the publication? You can ask the questions. Again, I am a member of the Global Young Academy. This Global Young Academy is headquarters in Germany. So Global Young Academy got a lot of activities. We got a lot of working groups. We work in many programs like a science for you, brain drain. Then the problem faced by young scientists. I'm the leading few working groups. But how this related to the publication, you can ask me. While working on this global young academy, you meet a lot of members from other countries. So Jesse, you want to apply for a Fulbright Fellowship in the US. If you have any group of members from the GIA from that group, you can apply from that. Just say you want to apply for Humboldt Fellowship, Humboldt Fellowship from Germany. So if that academy, you've got any partners you're working together, so they can be a good partner for you to work with that. On top of that, Global Young Academy also gives some funding. So if you are a member of that, you are the first person to know about the funding opportunities. When you get the funding, you will get the students. When you get the students, you get the publications. So can you see how the whole cycle working on it? So that is why I always tell you the big picture is very important. Publication means don't just look publications. That will never take you anywhere. Okay, here, some details about the full right. It was established in 1949 by the late Senator William Fulbright and sponsored by the US Department of State Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. The main focus is to increase mutual understanding between the people of US and the people of other countries. So luckily we are the partner of the Fulbright. So Malaysians are eligible. So we got the opportunity to study, teach, conduct research and exchange ideas. Okay, so this is a website of the Fulbright Malaysia. You can see the M-A-C-E-E. So I'm actually the one of the Fulbright Malaysia's uh, EXCO member, and I'm also involved as a chief panel to select Malaysian for the Fulbright program. So please go to, go to it. That's why I'm encouraging you all to go through this kind of uh, opportunities. So what are the grants for Malaysians? Eventually, all these things, I bet you, will lead for you a good grants, publication, exposure, uh, what I call like a collaboration, so many things. Because I'm one of the person who benefited from that. That is why I'm sharing with you and mentoring you regarding this. We got Fulbright Malaysian Graduate Study. We got Fulbright Malaysian Scholar Program. I'm the one of the recipients. Okay, you can always, because I took the picture, some deadline post, because every year these programs are available. Then Fulbright Malaysian Professional Exchange Program, Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant Program. So it's not only for scientists, you know, even for the language teachers can do. Uh, just to share with you, uh, one of my friends from uh, UTM, he's actually is a music teacher. You know. He's a music teacher. Even he got the uh, Fulbright program and benefited from this. Then here, they got a lot of field of studies. Any field is got. Okay, you can go to the website and can go through it. The Humphrey Fellowship, I want to uh, emphasize on that. So those who wanted to relate the science and policies, engineering and policies, this is a very good platform. And the eligibility also there, you can look at the eligibilities. Okay, so uh, you can see which uh, category you benefit, any age, uh, any field, you are eligible. But just look at which one is uh, related to. So I'm just sharing with you. Uh, this uh, picture I took when I was a Fulbright Visiting Scholar at Princeton University. So I work on the sustainable energy storage in innovative polymer electrolytes. Okay, this is a global young academy that I mentioned to you. Every year in September, there will be the procedure. You can go through the website. So they will take the young researchers below 40 years old. So applications are sought from young independent scholars who combine the highest level of research excellence 
with a demonstrated passion for delivering impact. So I tell you, many, many benefits you'll get by joining these kind of economies. So not limited on this, there are many academies to us. For example, the uh, third world of Academy of Sciences, Malaysia also got like uh, Academy of Sciences Malaysia, Young Scientist Network, so many things there. I'm just putting some. Okay, for this also, they got many research fields. Okay, not only science, they also got like a social sciences, arts and humanities. All these are involved. So why the grant and funding are important? Make use of this time to prepare good proposal. So the novelty is imp important, then apply for funding both locally and globally. Okay, why I put the, this picture here? Our mindset is very important. The moment you change your perception is the moment you rewrite the chemistry of your body. If you look at the B, if you look at the B, one person is actually scared. He thinks the B is very dangerous. He's a very dangerous animal. He thinks very bad about the B. But another person, when he look at the B, he look, the B is a honey for him. And I'm sure many of you know, honey is one of the important ingredient for the health of a human being. Every day morning, if you take honey with the hot water, your body system is very good, it will be very active. It must be a pure honey, not the, not pure honey. So it's a mind perception, you know, whether you're going to take the B as a good member or a bad member for the world. So perception is very important. Why I'm saying this? Sometimes we don't check our emails. We don't go for the opportunities. For example, uh, I'm talking about the current situation now. In UM, the uh, uh, IPPP, they do a lot of work, you know. They disseminate a lot of opportunities. But we must ask the questions to ourselves. How many of us actually grabbing the opportunities. We always like the person who look the bee as a dangerous animal. We always complain, no funding, difficult to get funding, no students, how to sustain, we are talking about that. But we never look the bee as a honey. So for example, recently they announced Malaysia Tory Science Foundation grant. How many of us already started to prepare proposal for that? They also announced a grant for Lumbaga Tima Malaysia, which give us the amount is very small, maybe RM 10,000 or RM 20,000. But remember, these grants are external grants, private grants, agencies grants. It will look good on your KPI. Even though the money is small, but when you get the grant, the amount of the motivation you get, the amount of confidence you get is not 10,000. It is much, much more than that. That is why I always say any opportunities you get, try to grab it. So those participants here, actually this Friday, I'm giving a talk on the Tore Foundation and also uh, the Tima Grant in uh, Faculty of Science because I want to give a mentoring session because I received both the grants. So just to share with you, I'm a senior professor. I got an international grants from Erasmus, which is uh, uh, 1 million euro. But I still applied the 10,000 Tima grant and I got it because I won't look at the amount of the grant. I will look at the opportunity. So these are one of the important things I'm telling you as a mentor. Don't look at the amount. Look at the opportunity that will build or bring your confidence level much higher. When you talk to some other person, sir, you can talk proudly, you can talk strongly, you can talk with the uh, what do you call like uh, the caliber because it will increase your confidence. That is very important. If you don't have the confidence, you'll be very scared to talk to people. And you feel that you're not good enough to talk to others because you're not doing the things that you're supposed to do. So that's why confidence are very important. Okay, this is another opportunity I'm going to share with you, Erasmus grant. This is a very good grant, European grant. Okay, so this one, they got two types. One is international research and also capacity buildings. 
So for you to get these grants, your networking is very important. Again, the publications is very, very important. Okay. So here, the capacity building project, they got more like a curriculum development, modernization, and these things also can be published, you know, because by doing these kind of things, we can organize our conferences. And based on that, we can publish some article and also can publish some papers. And these are amount, you can always can refer to the website. You see the amount is very big, you know, 500,000 to 1 million euro they give. And then they will support and they also will contribute to the cooperation and they promote a lot of voluntary work. And the work involves some surveys, studies, expert advice. They will also give money for you to organize conferences, seminars, for the staff training. Even with the grants that uh, I received from this grant, we are organizing some uh, staff training also under the food innovations. We completed like a two training and uh, we got a very good number of participants. Each training, we got like uh, 70, 80 participants and the trainings are free. You know? The trainings are free and also they get a certificate from the European Union that they completed the training. And uh, myself and some of the members from uh, my lab, like uh, Dr. Shahid and uh, Prof. Ramesh Kasi, we are the uh, trainers for this training also. See, this kind of uh, uh, connectivity uh, will give you uh, like a broad field to explore. And the best thing is Malaysia is one of the partners in the Erasmus, so we are eligible to get the grants. And the aim of the projects, of course, to support the eligible partners countries. So since we are the, one of the partner countries, so we get a lot of support from the European Union. An example of project you can see here, uh, strategic IP management, promoting modern talent management, Malaysia sustainable university campus network. You see, all these are very interesting topics. Again, remember, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Actually, if you look at the things, uh, the main, these, these are motto that I, I always use it. Okay, because we must go far together. You know. One of the motto and one of the mission of even EdEx, I can tell this is their purpose. Why they are putting effort, why they are uh, advertising these things. If you can see these things are very free for the students, but number of participants always less. The things they're doing these things is what? We want all of us to go very far. For that, we must go together. That is why whatever I'm practicing, whatever I'm doing, whatever I gained, I'm sharing with you because I want Many of you also will follow the pathway and also will be successful. And one day you can share the success story with me and with other peers as well. So that will make all of us very happy. And of course, whatever I mentioned here, not is the, uh, the best practices. I'm just shared with you the practices that I'm doing, which benefited me. I'm sure you will have uh, other best practices that benefited you that you wanted to share with me, you're always welcome to share with me. With that, I thank you. And I think it's opportunity to thank again all the participants that listen and also for the addict to giving this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Ramesh. Um, now we would like to invite any participants, if you have any questions or if you want to discuss anything with Prof. Ramesh, you are very welcome to do so. Morning. Can I uh, talk, uh, ask you something, Prof? Yeah, yeah, yeah please, please. Okay, I, <clears throat> sorry, I'm Visha from the Faculty of Education, okay. and this is my 20th year here in University of Malaya. Okay. So, we are mostly educators who are used to writing books, modules, you know, training programs and things like that. And when we joined University of Malaya, it was still a teaching university, it was not a research university. Yes, yes. I think so, you, joined, you joined earlier than me, I think. <laughs> yes, uh, very, very much earlier. Okay. So what happened is as the transformation is taking part, uh, taking place, and in fact, 
from my early days, I have been attending as what you advise, you know, attend lots of talk and things like that. But the sciences always seem to think that publishing is so simple compared to us who are in the arts, in humanities, in social science. Our journals are so limited. Our uh, reject rate is so high. So um, what would you advise humanity people? Or how can we work together so there's uh, more chances of publication and things like that? Thanks, Prof. Okay. okay, good. Actually, I'm a, uh, just to share with you, I'm a UM student uh, from, uh, I graduated, my, I got my PhD in 2004. Then I was working in a private institution in Utah. Then uh, I got promoted to associate professor and joined UM in 2010. So actually, uh, I'm from a science field, actually like a material science. Uh, when you say about education, uh, in one of the slides, I mentioned that, you know, the publication, the citation actually is a field related. It's field related. I, I truly understand, you know, even like in my own uh, faculty, because I'm a panel for, what do you call like a Tapisan Kanaikan Pankat. So even like a Tapisan Kanaikan Pankat, we know some department quite difficult to publish, you know. So we always got, you know, okay, this department which can publish a lot, their KPI that we said is higher. So some department we always put it lower, you know. Like your field for education, when you say, obviously publication, I know it's very difficult. We always uh, prefer, even I'm sure the university also prefer education uh, department and the faculty to come up with uh, like uh, more books and more book chapters. So since we are doing a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call like a um, lot of things related to uh, uh, what do you call like education and mind science work, I advise you, my advice here is that uh, there are three things I can advise you here. One is to involve in the more towards the IIRG projects, which is the university based. Second is TRGS project. This is like a, uh, uh, what do you call like a national level. The third one I really can encourage you will be the uh, Erasmus project. Because in Erasmus project, we actually got some educational background also. You know. Even just to share with you, maybe you can uh, e write email to me. Even this year also, I got invitation to apply for a proposal under the Erasmus project. If it's successful, even I can uh, make uh, education department since you showed the interest uh, during my talk. Even I can involve you all in that projects, then we can come out with some good publication from the outcome from there. You know. So actually, we are, we are the projects that we put like a more like a sustainable cities. That's uh, going to uh, more like a training the trainers and also the training the staff. You know. So there is a lot of opportunities. You know. So I can also share with you uh, some of the uh, grant that provided uh, the successful grant. You know. Uh, under the European Union project, uh, uh, let me uh, just know in, in my slide it was there. You know, I don't know whether you noticed that or not. Uh, just give me one minute. Huh? I just uh, go to that. Okay. Uh, okay. The topic you see here: uh, strategic IP management for effective RNI. Promoting modern talent development practices. Malaysia Sustainable University Campus Network. The other one, very interested for you, you know. Blended learning courses for teacher educators between Asia and Europe. Then campuses organize massive public educational opportunities in universities of Southeast Asia. So these are the projects actually, uh, uh, what I call like, uh, can be applied for uh, these Erasmus projects, you know. The international projects. So when we get this kind of a grants, like a three years, eventually we can hire some students. Then we can come out with some publications. So I'm, I advise you to explore these things also. Obviously, if I find any other, what I call like uh, opportunities regarding education, I will try to share with uh, your uh, faculty also. Because last time I got some opportunities regarding the economy. You know, so I shared with the dean of the faculty regarding the opportunity also. So I'm surely we'll contact you if you've got these opportunities, but I advise you to look into these Erasmus projects. And even like a TRGS also, uh, some of the projects, like for example, you can uh, approach some uh, researchers because they want other, uh, other units. Even I put a proposals for TRGS. 
next time you've got the opportunities maybe we'll contact you also how to what they call the disseminate the research outcome that we got in the lab to disseminate to the public to the society so we need people like you so when you publish that articles with some of our experimental data with the survey that you conducted that will make the papers even more colorful thanks prof i'll email you later thank you very much i hope uh, my explanation answered at least a bit of your queries yeah th these are the kind of motivation that we need from time to time <laughs> thank you thank you thank you at least after 20 years at least i gave you some ideas <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> welcome welcome I put my email also there. Okay, Prof, I'll take it down. Any other questions or suggestions to improve myself also or improve yourself also? Hi, Prof. I'm Jamie. Okay. Um, thank you for the wonderful uh, information. <laughs> <laughs> right, very inspiring your work and your journey in fact um, I'm inspired but um, I was uh, listening to your talk and uh, I can't help but wonder if you would be able to show us an example of a best-selling cover letter because uh, that is one point where I get stuck also all the time cover letter but so far I never really got rejected because of the cover letter purposes but I've heard the importance of cover letter but I've never mastered it yet so that's the first one. Second one is about... Uh, can, I, can, I answer, can I answer the cover letter first? Can, can, can. <laughs> Thank okay. you, bro. <laughs> you know, you know, I too many questions and I just forget what, <laughs> what to say. Okay, the cover letter, you know why I say very important now? Uh, when I was in the Princeton University uh, as a visiting professor there, so I was in the panel for selecting, because, you know, Princeton University is one of the Ivy universities. You know, and the success rate, uh, only 6%, you know. Actually, I know the beauty of the cover letter when I was there. You know. The success rate only 6%. Eh? So one of the criteria they select for the students to get admitted in the Ivy universities is a cover letter. You know. We think the, the highest, the best results only play an important role. Sometimes people wonder, you know, I got a very, the best results. Why I didn't get uh, the place? One of the reasons is your cover letter. So that is why the cover letter is very important. You know. So even though your, your paper not get rejected due to the cover letter, I'm very happy to know that. But some, but I can tell you, majority of the time, or I can say almost 99.99%, the editor, because I'm also an editor for a few journals, you know, he won't write the paper got rejected because of the cover letter. Because we don't want to put the person right down, you know, they say, you don't even know how to write a letter. So when they don't write the comments there, rejection, we don't, we cannot think they didn't read our cover letter, you know, because editors, they, we would, your cover letter is not good. They won't write. They just say the novelty is not really expressed in the paper. That means the novelty is not sufficient in your abstract and the novelty and the gap is also not presented in the cover letter. So we must know that first of all, you know. So the points that I mentioned to you, you must make sure you write in the cover letter. Even though sometimes we say, the cover letter might not be important, whatever, but for our self-satisfaction, for our self-satisfaction, when we submit the documents for something, we want to make sure all each documents are perfect. So for that, I just advise you, for your personal self-satisfaction, make sure the cover letter is well prepared. All right, Prof, I take on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, the second question I have is that um, I Sorry, need... are you are you academic or student? I am an academic. <laughs> okay, okay. From but I'm just happy working. That's why I always laugh. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. No, I just want to know because mm -hmm. I cannot talk to you like you're talking to a student. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no, that's okay. That's okay. Which faculty? Um, yeah? um, faculty of medicine. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, the second question I have, Prof, is regarding, you did casually mention about open access publication, but um, there is a school, two schools of thoughts about open access publication versus traditional journal publication. What's your take? What would be your advice? Yeah. Okay, uh, we are from University of Malaya. You are from University of Malaya, right? Yes, Prof. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, for University of Malaya, 
we got like a publication you know publication what happens now uh, pay charge uh, they only give for q1 and q2 and the amount that they what you call it uh, subsidized is uh, very limited and it might not be enough to uh, what you call like uh, uh, to for us to really uh, support the publications so that is a very big constraint so normally like i'll just tell you my practice you know so to my students i always suggest to them we go for the traditional publications so one of the reason i cannot say no cannot deny because there is no funding for that okay but i always say the traditional publication is very important for my students because the main reason is not enough funding but the problem will always occurs we must think this is i, I might be wrong you know this might just my perception like uh, normally journals nowadays uh, even like a uh, only traditionally published journals nowadays they got two option when the final uh, uh, submission button they always ask whether we want to go for subscription one or the open access so we always go for the subscriptions the traditional method but then we must remember the editorial companies also nowadays they also need money to run the things when lot of uh, countries like china you know they really pay lot of money for publications like korea japan so when the number of papers coming to that particular journals many they wanted to go for open access so in that kind of a competition we might lose out unless our papers is really high quality then of course the editor will really pay attention just say your our papers is in the borderline in the borderline case we are competing with another borderline case papers obviously the online will get the better chances to get go for review but our paper is outstanding even though traditional our papers still will get upset accepted so if you want to go for the traditional publication i tell you the paper really must be in the top 10% before we submit the one thing that i like in online publication is you will get a good citation that is the only thing the visibility is very good but 90% i can say even 95% of my papers many of us of my papers that i publish i got nearly like a 300 papers 95% of my papers are, are traditional methods so my citation is in uh, hnx are quite reasonable quite good so i think uh, even you publish traditional uh, method it might not going to effect but again we must look the funding and all these factors all right prof thank you so much that's very helpful thank you thank you very much any other question there's no other question um maybe we can end the session okay thank you very much again for all the participants and also for the organizers thank you prof ramesh uh, thank you thank you very much thank you very much also for the participants please do not forget to fill in the uh, both of the form the attendance form and the feedback form i put it in the chat box do do i need to add, fill up also uh, no no <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much prof it was a very very eye opener or eye opening um training from you thank you thank you very much i'm happy to Uh, do this kind of sessions thank you very much